Hello, and welcome to uh, 11.2 in Physics 20, and we're talking about electric potential difference. It's electric potential difference. Now, if you remember from some of your previous signs, you may remember electric potential difference is really just being the voltage of things. You may have called it voltage, but this is really what we call electric potential difference. And although the unit is in volts and the symbol is V, it's actually an electric potential difference, a difference in electric potential energy, for lack of a better word. Um, now, there are two formulas that we have associated with this a wonderful little V here on our formula sheets. And the first one is E is equal to V over D, where that E is our electric field strength. Field strength. And that will have units of volts per meter. And D is the distance traveled. Now, in many cases, that's actually going to be the distance between two parallel plates, but it's not always the distance between two parallel plates. Sometimes we see things only moving halfway, as an example. The second one is a little bit more of definition and it's the potential difference is equal to the change in energy over the charge. And so this is the change in energy measured in joules over the charge. And that would be in coulombs. And so what this is saying is the electric potential difference is measured in how much change in energy we see divided by the unit of charge that's actually moving within there. Because the potential difference is really just the change in energy. Change in energy per unit of charge. If the energy results in an increase in electrostatic potential in an electrostatic potential energy store or a mechanical energy store will depend on essentially two things. And one of them is the amount of charge that's actually being moved. And the way in which it moves in the field. Now, I should put this, this is uh, uh, parallel to the field, meaning either with or against the field. Okay, let's take a look at what we mean by this. So let's say we've got this electron moving towards a positive plate. And so we're drawing two plates in between. And we're going to call this side positive, the right side positive, the left side negative here. And so we would see an electric field in here, which would be moving to the left. and that is the way that a positive test charge would move. But we've got an electron moving towards the positive plate. So it's moving against the field. Now, in this case, the energy in an electrostatic store takes a mechanical pathway to the kinetic energy store. So on the negative plate here, 
you're going to have a lot of electric potential energy stored within the electron and as it moves towards a positive plate uh, there's going to be a force exerted on it that's going to cause it to start moving faster and faster as a kinetic energy store as the energy moves from that electric electrostatic store so if we take a look this is similar to let's say a ball falling to the ground and so this would kind of be the ground for the electron that electron had a lot of potential energy stored in it but it's actually electrostatic potential energy and as it moves towards a positive plate or a ball would move towards the ground it would gain energy the same way that you would move from potential energy store to a kinetic energy store now if we wanted to find out how much energy that is well we would be taking a look at that delta e over q which is equal to the potential difference now this potential difference will say how much energy is changed per unit of charge and in this case the electron has like 1.6 i'm sending 19 coulombs right and so it'd be a measure in how much energy it would uh gain or lose as it moves through there but the voltage is equal to uh, e times d and that's just a extenuation of the formula we had before which is equal to delta e over q and so e d q is equal to that change in energy so if we want to know how much change in energy this electron is transferring from the electrostatic store to the kinetic store it's the electric field strength that's that mark that's in the red the distance that this is traveling right now if this is at positive plate going to the negative plate that's the normal thing but if it was not fully there and moving it would be that distance that would be traveling and q uh, the charge on the electron now again this distance here that distance we should remember is parallel to the field only so in this case going to the positive plate let's take a look at what happens if we've got an electron moving towards the negative plate so similar sort of scenario here put the positive plate on the right again negative plate on the left so our electric field strength is still going this way towards the left but the electron is over here and we're moving it over here well the electron would be attracted to the positive plate and moving to the negative and so it would be similar to lifting a ball off the ground now the energy in the uh, kinetic store because in order for it to move to the left it's going to have to be moving to the left and it takes a mechanical pathway to an electrostatic store similar to what we saw uh, in the previous example, except moving in that opposite direction. Well, what happens if we have a proton moving to the positive plate? Put the negative plate on the left, positive plate on the right. We'll draw that electric field again the way a positive test charge would move within this field but we got a proton moving towards the positive plate well in this case if we're moving that to here well the positive charge wants to move left it wants to be attracted to that negative plate and so this is the ground for that positive charge and so as we're lifting it up, the energy in the kinetic store is taking a mechanical pathway to an electrostatic store. In case you haven't uh, 
guess by now we, the electrostatic store would be the same as the mechanical equivalent of a potential energy. However, it is in relation to other charged objects, which is why it's different. Right? But if we were to take a look at that proton and moving it towards the negative plate, so it's here and moving down this way to the moving down, right? It's actually moving to the left where the field is moving towards the left. What we're going to see here is the energy is moving from an electrostatic store and into a kinetic store. As this moves towards the negative plate, it will, uh, that energy uh, moves from the electrostatic store to the kinetic store in the form of motion. And so again, this is the ground for that. Now, what happens if we move perpendicular to the field? Right, Because we've always talked about this in being parallel to the field. Well, kind of keeping that mechanical analogy again, if this either elect positive or negative charge moves perpendicular to the field, it still has the same distance away from the positive or negative plate. As a result, there's going to be a, no energy moving between energy potential and kinetic energy stores. Right. Remember, the D in this formula is not necessarily the distance between the plates, but very typically we're treating it like that because we're moving from one plate to the other. And that's just the way that most of them, you, uh, just how most of the problems are going to be phrased. But it's not necessarily the distance between the plate. It's the distance the charge is moving between the plates. Right, so if we were to calculate the electric field strength, so we're looking for E between two parallel plates that are six centimeters apart, right? So that's a distance between the plates of 6.0 centimeters or 0 0.06 meters with an electric potential difference of nine volts. Right, and this is really describing the nature between those two plates that are six centimeters apart. And so E is equal to V over D. We'll take that nine volts divided by 0 0.06. And so that electric field strength is 150 volts per meter. Right now, again, because these are parallel plates, that field is going to be uniform throughout. And here, just the way I'm kind of drawing this, I'm putting the positive on the left side and the negative on the right side. But it's a uniform field in here, right? So it doesn't matter whether it's here, here, over here, over here, over here. The electric field strength is the same everywhere between those two plates. Well, if a proton is accelerated from rest, If a proton is accelerated from rest by a potential difference of 370 volts, what is the change in kinetic energy of the proton? Well, in this case, uh, we know that V is equal to delta E over Q, or VQ is equal to the change in energy. 
right? We're looking for that change in kinetic energy. So we've got 375 volts multiplied by the charge, which is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs will get us that change in energy. And so that change in energy there is a 6 times 10 to the negative 17 joules of energy. So in this case, because we're seeing a change in kinetic energy, now we're not told which direction this is, but if we drew our plates like this, the way the positive test charge would go would be this way towards the left. Now, if the electron was moving from here to here, that change in energy, that change in kinetic energy will be uh, taking a mechanical pathway to a electrostatic store, therefore would be losing velocity. Whereas if the proton were, let's say, moving this way towards left with the field, it would be uh, moving from an electrostatic store to a kinetic store and thus gaining velocity. Right now, if we wanted to find out what that uh, final velocity was, we would be using that change in kinetic energy with one half mv squared minus one half mv squared. If it was starting at rest, we know that initial velocity is just zero, and so it's just the final velocity. Otherwise, we'd have to be subtracting based on the kinetic energy from that initial velocity it had. Just something to keep in mind for a little bit later on as we move on to our third example where we're actually looking for that velocity right we've got an electron entering through the hole in a positive plate and collides with the negative plate 10 centimeters apart right so we've got a positive plate and 10 centimeters away right, so from a distance of 10 centimeters the electron is shooting through here and does eventually collide with this plate so we're dealing with the full 10 centimeters here this electron is moving at uh, 3.0 times 10 to the 6 meters per second so it's zooming right through this hole and eventually collides with this plate we know that this plate is has 12 volts of potential difference between them and we want to know what is the velocity at this point all right so what can we figure with this well v is equal to delta e over q or vq is equal to that change in energy so we take that 12 volts multiplied by 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs and so we can calculate that change in energy so that change in energy is in fact 1.92 times Two times 10 to the negative 18 joules is a change in energy. Now, because this is going from the positive plate to the negative plate, it is got a strong electrostatic store at this point, and but it is got an even stronger electrostatic store at this point, which means the kinetic energy is taking mechanical pathway to a electrostatic store and so we're seeing the energy go here and thus the kinetic energy will be a little bit lower this is going to slow down 
So that change in energy is going to be equal to 1 half MVF squared minus 1 half MVI squared. Okay, so one half the mass of the proton is 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms v squared minus one half one half 1 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 but the velocity was 3 times 10 to the 6. And it's just the velocity of that squared here. When you actually solve for this velocity, you're going to wind up with a velocity of uh, 2.96 times 10 to the 5 meters per second as your final velocity. Sorry, scratch that 2.99 times 10 to the 6 meters per second as a final velocity. There's no real change here. Okay. And that's mostly because this thing is just moving so fast through the plates. Give this next one a try, pause the video, and then once you think you've got the answer, please uh, unpause the video and see how you do. Got two parallel plates, potential difference of 120 volts. What speed can a proton reach when accelerated from rest off the positive plate as it reaches the negative plate, which is 2.5 centimeters away? Okay, so. VQ is equal to the change in energy, which means the change in energy is 1.92 times 10 to the negative 17 joules. Now that change in energy is going to see in uh, changes in the kinetic energy store. But because VI is zero, we're starting with no energy, no kinetic energy, uh, no energy in the kinetic energy store and it's all moving into it and so as it starts off at the negative uh, positive plate and moves towards the negative plate this proton is going to pick up speed thus reaching a velocity of 1.52 times 10 to the 5 meters per second okay what is the electric field strength 0.25 centimeters away from a positive plate between parallel plates that are one centimeter apart? So if this is one centimeter apart, and we'll call this plate the positive plate, negative, negative, negative. So we're 0.25 centimeters. So we're talking about here. away from the positive plate or 0.75 centimeters away from the negative plate. Now there is 1.5 volts between these two plates. 1.5 volts, right? And the electric field strength we know is V over Q. Wait, sorry, VD, V over D. Okay. So we're going to take that 1.5 volts and divide that by 0 0.01 meters, and you're going to wind up with 150 volts per meter. Now, this electric field strength, remember, is in fact uniform between here. It doesn't matter what location we are here. 
every single one of these points between the plates will have this potential difference. So really this is excess information. One more example that we are going to do, and that's how much work how much work is done against the electric field if an electron is pushed four centimeters towards the negative plate. So if we've got plate here, plate here, we've got an electron that's being pushed four centimeters between the plates. Now these plates sit 10 centimeters apart and carry a voltage of 200 volts per meter. Right now, the change in energy, not volts per meter, just volts. What am I thinking? Just volts. So the electric field strength times the distance traveled is going to get us that voltage of 200. So this is, in fact, uh, what we're looking at for the voltage, but we're only using four tenths of this distance, but that 200 volts is over the full 10 centimeters, right? So the electric field strength of voltage over distance that electric field strength being 200 volts divided by 0 0.1, sorry, 0 0.1 meters gets us an electric field strength of 2,000 uh, volts per meter. Now that change in energy is equal to V times Q. That change in energy, that voltage is equal to EDQ, where it's 2000 volts per meter. And what we're doing here is we're only moving at 0 0.04 centimeters times the charge of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. Coulombs, which gets us a change in energy of 1.28 times 10 to the negative 17 joules. Now, this may seem a little bit confusing, right? Because we found an electric field strength, and then we used the voltage, and then transferred in this ED after we use ED. So an alternate way to think of this, and I'll do this in blue, is that if we were to figure out the change in energy, which is just VQ, and we use that 200 volts multiplied by the 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs, that means the change in energy would be 3.2 times 10 to the negative 17 joules of energy. But remember that 200 volts is for the full 10 centimeters, and we're only using 4 tenths of it, which also gets us 1.28 times 10 to the negative 17 joules. And so either way works, right? This potential energy of 200 volts is for the full 10 centimeters, but we're only using four tenths of it. Either way, whichever way makes more sense to you is a great is a way to do it. And if you've got any questions, let me know.